Cube is a live mobile studio. And we bring We're back here live in Las Vegas. This is Silicon Angles and Wikibon's The Cube. Our program, we go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. We are going to break down the analysis here of Amazon Web Services, slew of announcements. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co host, Dave Vellante, and a special appearance by Wikibon analyst Jeff Kelly, who is the number one big data analyst in the planet. Uh, of course, we're biased. Uh, Jeff, welcome back. Yesterday you were out scouring the landscape. Uh, we had Stu Miniman earlier on. Um, so we really want to get your perspective. We know you were out there talking to a lot of the folks, mm -hmm. talking to the, to the uh, developers. A um, lot of stuff going on that smells and, and walks and quacks like big data here. I mean, a lot of, lot of enablement. Obviously, cloud platform is enabling huge tsunami of new applications. DevOps, obviously, the big focus. What's your take? Uh, yeah, a lot of big data related announcements this morning. Uh, you, see, you saw things both on the, uh, some of the analytics side, the more the sexy side of big data, but also around the uh, whole concept of making big data and data management uh, in a big data context more enterprise grade. Uh, so you saw things around uh, reliability, um, supporting multiple zones, uh, backup disaster, disaster recovery uh, around RDS and, and some other of the uh, data platforms that AWS offers. And of course you saw uh, Kinesis, which was I think probably the biggest announcement got my attention the most. Uh, Kinesis, uh, a new uh, service from AWS, managed service all around stream uh, processing of data, uh, so you can basically power real-time intelligent applications. So those are the, kind of the two things that I heard this morning. Again, Kinesis, the analytics, that's kind of the sexy part of big data. The stuff around reliability and uh, disaster recovery, keeping uh, data consistent. Not quite as sexy, but uh, very important in terms of making big data uh, enterprise grade. Now, I was talking to uh, David Floyer earlier this morning. He said that, uh, based on his information, uh, Amazon developed Kinesis mainly using its own technology, so they're not buying in technology. This is really their first entry into the space. And Jeff, you and I have talked about this a little bit. Um, the, whole, the whole notion of real time in, 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 in this new unstructured world, in the Hadoop world. Uh, we've done a number of case studies. The one that, obviously, we talk about a lot is uh, TapAd which yep. is an ad serving application, and essentially what they're doing is they're, they're merging their analytical data with some of their transaction data and serving up ads in near real time, you know, as the customer is you know, trolling around the website. So a uh, company behind that tech is uh, Aerospike, they use an SSD, others are, are doing that as well. We've had a number of folks on theCUBE. This Kinesis feels like it's related to that, maybe not directly head to head, mm -hmm. uh, but, but talk about that a little bit. Right, well, so as you said, Kinesis was developed internally uh, by AWS. Uh, you know, their problem was uh, they had all this metric uh, and data, basically how people were using it, the AWS platform, and they wanted to monitor that and, and analyze that data in real time. Uh, so they started to develop what is now Kinesis, and they realized, well, this is something that could be applicable to a lot of use cases in our, uh, in our customer base, so they went ahead and made this a full-fledged managed service uh, running on AWS. So, you know, how it relates to uh, some of the trends we're seeing in the larger uh, big data world, um, what, it, what it struck me uh, initially hearing about Kinesis was it's, it's very much related to um, the industrial internet use cases around uh, automating uh, operations using real-time uh, analytics, essentially creating intelligent operational applications so you can do things like uh, uh, you know, wind turbine can self-correct based on real-time data that's coming from both the machine itself, maybe outside sources like weather data, other things, um, essentially automating these decisions in real time because you can't, you know, you can't have a person doing that in real time, making those kind of operational level decisions. So that's kind of where I see this starting to fit in in terms of how it actually compares to some of the other technologies out there. So you mentioned Aerospike and TapAd. I think ad tech is probably the easiest example for people to understand. You log onto a site, within a, you know, milliseconds you get an ad that's tailored to you. There's a lot of analytics going on in the background, yes. uh, analyzing who you are, your profile. Uh, there's advertisers that then bid on whether they want to show you an ad. The winner has to decide from their inventory which ad to show you based on your profile and your potential to buy. All that analytics happens in you know, under a second behind the scenes, and it's obviously automated. There's no person back there doing that kind of uh, analysis that's just not feasible. 
Um, so that's kind of the easiest example to understand, but apply that type of workflow to any number of industries in the industrial internet space, like healthcare, like transportation, energy, and you can see the potential value uh, of really automating these systems, creating almost like intelligent ecosystems around, operational ecosystems around all these different industries that impact everybody. Uh, now, in terms of where Kinesis fits in, um, it's, it's unclear to me if it's truly a streaming engine. Um, the example and the way uh, Werner described it in the keynote today, talked about uh, data streaming in and then persisting it into different databases such as DynamoDB or others to then do an analysis on it. So to me, it didn't quite reach the level of a true streaming engine, like something you would see from um, oh, IBM, in, in, Streams. In, in, Infosphere Streams, streams H-Streaming, uh, which H -streaming. was recently acquired. Uh, uh, exactly, so uh, we still need some more details to determine exactly what level of, uh, you know, does it really fit the streaming category, the streaming definition. And then the other thing that I was a little disappointed with in the keynote was the example was a social media application. Yeah, they took the Twitter fire took hose. Took the Twitter fire oh, hose, which is. Like my favorite, uh, <laughs> you know, planet is Mars, and ended up being yeah, Bruno Mars. Right. And but it was very much it was a. Sort of trite. It was, a, it, was, it was a little trite, but it was a person. It was an end user doing some analytics, and it was real time in the sense that the data was, you know, sub milliseconds coming in, but it was not. It was an analytic uh, use case where it was a user trying to gain some insight. It was not automating a an action. Which I have to, to me say, is where the real value of the streaming. I, I agree. Comes I in. was more impressed two years ago with Larry Ellison's uh, uh, demo of Twitter, and that wasn't that impressive. Right. But well, yeah. I, I think people look at. I think it, was a, it wasn't the greatest uh, use case to pick uh, to, to show one because it's you know Twitter social media. People say great, it's kind of neat, but is it really that? It's going to change the world that I can now analyze Twitter in real time as opposed to 10 minutes old. And again, for, for me, the real value of big data and the industrial internet is when you start to build applications that are infused with analytics that are automating operational decisions um, that a person just can't do. And when you start doing that, you start getting, you creating, as I said, intelligent ecosystems where you can uh, make much more efficient operations in healthcare, um, and, you know, energy, the energy grid, for example. Um, it leads to lower prices for consumers, uh, at least to better service for consumers. Um, so to me, those are really the, uh, the potential valuable use cases, and I'm not, it's not clear to me that Kinesis is able to tap into those operational type applications. But isn't ad tech an example of that operational ac uh, application? Oh, where absolutely. You, you're essentially making a decision in near real time pro without, without really human involvement, right? It, that, that's the best example, and one of the only real world examples that's out there right now. It needs to be applied more to um, as I said, these other use cases, and that's what we're seeing why you know, GE's built their cloud and some of the technology they're working with with Pivotal and AWS, as a matter of fact, to do that. Well, what about high velocity trading, for example? I mean, is this not an application for, it's, it's one of, they said financial services, I presume they're talking about trading apps. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that would be a use case, for sure. I think one of the challenges, you know, there's been uh, complex event processing engines, uh, but that was generally one source of data. It was not as, uh, it's not a distributed system, so there's, that's where info Fear Streams comes in, for example. That's a distributed streaming environment. Um, so yeah, that's an example. I don't know if I'd put that into the industrial internet use case and some of these um, uh, societally beneficial use cases. You could argue, I mean, certainly it's wealth creation and that benefits people. Um, but you know, where I think it really starts to make impact on people's lives is when you're talking about energy, that you consume at your home, and when it's healthcare, when you go to the doctor and you've got actually, the people are there, the doctors are there that you need, the specialists, the bed's ready, the machines are ready, it's optimized, it's shorter visits, it's more efficient, et cetera. Jeff, what are you hearing about the uptake on uh, EM, EMR, Elastic MapReduce? Um, it's, it's, it's coming around, uh, it's, you know, it's hard to judge specifically how much of uh, the AWS business is around EMR, uh, but from what I'm hearing from customers that they, they like it a lot, it, it actually uh, abstracts away a lot of the complexity of running your own Hadoop cluster, which, you know, I mean, if you st take a step back, that's pretty much one of the main benefits of the cloud generally. Um, so people like it for that reason. Uh, I think the challenge is, one, is data movement. Getting all that data into, your, into, into Amazon can be a challenge. Um, I think the other thing is you know, building applications on top of it to actually do more with EMR and Hadoop. Uh, but it's, it's one of those areas where Amazon's focused on it. I spoke with uh, some of the product managers of EMR. You know, they're focused on being completely Apache compatible. They're, you know, they're, they try to trail just behind the Apache releases. Um, and you can run other. You can also run other Hadoop distributions on, on AWS if you want. You don't get. So the, you can run Hortonworks on there. You, you can, can run Hortonworks. You can run Cloudera. You can run Mapr. Uh, I think the difference is when you do that, you are as a as a as a customer, you're still dealing with a lot of the 
not a lot, some of the complexity of, of running your own cluster, you've still got to manage that process where with EMR, they have the ability, if you use the full EMR capabilities, to, to abstract away that kind of thing. So you're not, for instance, you know, notified when a node goes down. Amazon takes care of that. You don't even have to know when that happens. Whereas if you're using other Hadoop distributions on top of AWS, that's still something you have to be aware of and, and, and uh, take into consideration. All right, Jeff, well thanks for coming on theCUBE, helping us unpack Kinesis and uh, a little bit on uh, Elastic MapReduce. So hopefully we'll get you on again later in the day. Absolutely, thanks. Be right back with our next guest after this short break. Exclusive coverage, SiliconANGLE Wikibon. Go to crowdchat.net slash reinvent if you want to join the conversation. We're documenting the, the conversation here in theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.